Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about DxO Pure Raw because this software has been getting a lot of hype lately and um, I'm generally a very skeptical person. I don't buy into the hype, you know, that this is a game changer or results are amazing. It's like getting a new camera, but I, and I wouldn't even have bothered with this if it wasn't for a lot of you guys, my viewers telling me I had to download and try this. So I was like, okay, I'll download it, see what I think. And all I can say is, color me impressed. Now, full disclosure, I didn't actually buy DxO Pure Raw. I just downloaded the free trial, and that's what we'll be using today in the video. However, I was still very impressed and ended up buying the PhotoLab 4 Elite, which includes everything that Pure Raw can do. And it's only like 60 bucks more. And I'll talk a little bit at the end about why I decided to just spend that extra 60 bucks. But today I'm going to focus primarily on the pure raw deep prime function. So let's get started. Now the first thing we're going to look at are a group of images that I took last year when I was doing some high ISO testing and comparing my EM1 Mark III versus my Lumix S5, which is you know a full frame camera from Panasonic. Uh, but first let's look at a base ISO 200 image from the EM1 Mark III. All right, let's just start with some baseline images. On the left here, I have the EM1 Mark III at ISO 200, and on the right, I have the same camera at ISO 6400. And if we punch in, you can see there's a fairly significant difference between the two ISOs. However, if I process that ISO 6400 image using DxO Pure Raw, this is what I get. Pretty amazing. I mean, I would almost say that the ISO 6400 image is now cleaner than the base ISO 200. Uh, I, I just could not believe my eyes. Let's, uh, let's look at another part of this image, say over here. So as you can see here, this is pretty impressive. I can shoot at basically ISO 6400 and get virtually the same, if not better, image quality I would have gotten at ISO 200. Now, I can't speak for dynamic range because obviously we're going to lose some of that. But, you know, for normal images that I take, I, I don't have to worry. I can shoot at high ISO now, no problem. Let's compare this against the original ISO 6400 RAW image. Look how well that cleaned up, especially up here in the corners. I mean, there is no noise in the, you know, sort of this uh, empty space here, where there's all kinds of color noise over here. And look how well this thing got sharpened up. And I didn't do anything other than just process it through Deep Prime. Now let's look at the maximum ISO 25,600. And on the left here, I have the original RAW. Uh, and on the right, I have the DxO Pure RAW image processed. And it's, I just couldn't believe it. So let's punch in and look at the uh, color chart first. It's just amazing how it cleaned up all of this noise, but still retained all of this detail. Uh, and if we get a little closer, let's look at the uh, Pen F. I mean, it's it it cleaned up really nicely and maintained just about all of the detail. Like if you look at the knurling on the button here, the lettering along the uh, color mode dial, and Let's go over to the background over here. I mean, I just can't believe how well it cleaned up the noise in this image without messing up the background, meaning this, this area back here. Uh, because a lot of times when you start denoising and sharpening and all of that, you start getting all kinds of sharpening artifacts or grain uh, because of the over sharpening, but somehow deep prime using its artificial intelligence or whatever they want to call it, was able to only sharpen the parts that it thinks needed to be sharpened without over sharpening areas that don't need to be sharpened, but only reducing the, the noise, the color noise, luminant noise, etc. Now it's not perfect. It's not going to bring details back from areas that were totally destroyed by the noise. So let me just show you a quick example in the same image what I'm talking about. So let's look back at the base ISO 200 image and compare it to a processed 25,600 image. And if I punch into the color chart, it looks really good. 
but there's not a lot of fine detail. I mean, you can read the text here just like you can read it here. It did a good job with the colors at retaining the colors, although there is some color shift that I adjusted for. Uh, but when we go back to the E500, you can see, for example, right here, there's a little Phillips screw in the body that you can't make out at all here on the uh, high ISO image. And when we look around in other places, like this uh, micro four thirds symbol here, or it's actually the four thirds symbol, is, you know, the color's all gone over here. It's got totally lost in noise, just like a lot of the details inside the lens where these rings are. I mean, it, it did a good job trying to recover those, but uh, ultimately, there was just too much noise in the image and the detail was gone and it's not just going to make stuff up, right? Or at least you hope it doesn't. But again, if we look back, say, in this corner here, I just can't believe how much detail it recovered without messing up the negative space or the empty space here. That is really impressive. So my next question was, can I get my Micro Four Thirds EM1 Mark III to perform similar to my full frame Lumix S5. So let's take a look at that. So what we're looking at here now is my EM1 Mark III at ISO 6400 processed with DxO Pure Raw versus my Lumix S5 at ISO 6400 unprocessed, so straight out of camera raw image. And if we punch in, you can see that it's just amazing. You know, the, the M1 Mark III looks better than the raw uh, full-frame camera at the same ISO. Now let's look at that one part of the camera that I thought too much detail was lost. And you can see it, you know, the, the Lumix S5 is amazing, but this Pure Raw really brought the M1 Mark III within spitting distance, I think of a full frame camera at this ISO. Because you can still see the screw here and you can see it over here. You can see the color of the uh, four thirds symbol has been retained and recovered. And uh, the only complaint I would really have about the processing here is that it looks a tad bit over sharpened uh, on the pure raw side. Now we're looking at the M1 Mark III at ISO 25600 process with pure raw versus a straight out of camera raw image from my Lumix S5. And if we punch in again, you can see that uh, it really, really cleaned it up to, I think, look a little better than the S5, at least on the color chart. But let's go over to the uh, Olympus E500. And this is where you can see what I was talking about before is it's not magic and it's not going to bring back detail that was never there to begin with as you can see the phillips screw is totally gone here but over here on the uh, panasonic you can still make out that there's a screw there in the body you can definitely see a clear line between the camera lens and the camera body whereas over on the em1 mark iii it's kind of all blended together and then looking inside the lens move these around a bit you can see that you know the, the lens barrel itself is very very uh you know it's kind of over sharpened a little bit messy but over here on the lumix s5 it's very very clean meaning this will clean up nicely uh with dxo pure raw so let's compare dxo pure raw on a lumix x5 all right, now we have the same process, 25,000 ISO image from the M1. And then over here on the right is the processed image from the Lumix S5 at 25,600. And uh, yeah, it's a lot better, right? As we would expect. I mean, it's amazing. We can still read the text here on the color card and make out the serial numbers here on both images. but. When we go over to the darker areas, like on the E500, look how nicely the Lumix S5 cleaned up. I mean, there's definitely, you can see the screw here. You can still see a definitive line between the camera lens and body versus the M1 Mark III. 
Now what I want to show you now are a couple images from some recent photo walks that I went on. And uh, these were not made to test the XO Prime. These are just images that I normally take on my normal photo walks. And uh, these are the images that actually made the buying decision for me, right? Because test shots, you can kind of pixel peep and tear apart and, you know, you can make a decision or not based on those. But I made my decision on the images that I take every day. Um, and this is where I put my money where my mouth is. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so here's a picture of my dog, Ellie, and uh, it's the whole reason I got into photography to begin with. But uh, let's go ahead and punch in at the fine details. I tried to focus on her eye here, and I took this with the M10 Mark II at ISO 16000. And just look at the detail that got brought back, especially in the textures around her eyes, all of the fur. And if we go down, you know, down towards her nose, uh, before we get lose our depth of field, you can see it was just, it's just amazing how much detail got brought back. But again, what's even more amazing is when you look at the background, it really cleaned up the background without over sharpening it. So uh, this impressed me a lot on a, just a regular image. Now let's look at one other one. Now here's a very dimly lit scene at ISO 25600 on my EM10 Mark II. And as you can see, the unprocessed raw on the left and the process raw on the right with some perspective corrections and things. But let's just punch into this brick building and uh, take a closer look. I mean, I just look at the brickwork and the window. Look at this uh, hole here or whatever this is. I mean, yeah, there's some loss of detail and maybe some sharpening artifacts, but this is now a totally usable image. And I don't think anybody would know that I took this at ISO 25000. You know, if we look at this roof line back here, I mean, it just, it brought back a lot of the detail. I mean, yeah, some of it was lost here in the shadow area. I guarantee this is all siding and textured, but that's a very small part of the image overall. Now, DxO Pure Raw is a very simple interface. Basically, the way I use it is I just drag over from my file explorer into DxO Pure Raw images that I want to process. And then I just click on process, and then it'll prompt you with this window, export it uh, using DxO Prime or Deep Prime in a DNG format or JPEG if you prefer, and then it'll export that into a subfolder called DxO, or you can choose a custom folder, and then you just click process. And uh, this takes about a minute to process the image, 30 seconds to a minute, so I'll uh, cut to that part. All right, so once the processing's done, I can do export to, and I can export it to my software directly like so. And as you can see, I can just then import it, add my keywords, et cetera, and select import. So as you can see, my workflow is very simple when I'm using DxO Pure Raw. However, I decided to go with PhotoLab 4 Elite, which includes the uh, raw processing that Pure Raw can do. But it gives me additional functionality that you can't do in DxO Pure Raw alone. So let me show you why I thought it was worth spending an extra 60 bucks to get the PhotoLab 4 Elite very quickly. All right, so I've opened up a file here in PhotoLab 4 Elite, and uh, it has the same DxO denoising technologies as DxO Pure Raw. So I can click on Deep Prime, but it gives me additional controls for how much denoising I want to do. I can denoise a little more by sliding this over. I can pull it back a little bit to retain some more detail. And then I can add sharpening or reduce sharpening here. So there's a little bit more fine tuning when you do the denoising process that you can't do in DxO Prime or DxO Pure Raw. But the other thing PhotoLab 4 Elite allows you to do is export this file in a TIFF format. So let me show you. When I go to File, Export to Disk, instead of just DNG or JPEG, I have the option to export as a TIFF file. And the reason 
this is important to me and hopefully and maybe to some other Olympus users is I can now use Olympus Workspace to process my images uh, from here because Olympus Workspace does not work on DNG files, but it will open up TIFF files. And of course, you guys know, if you've been watching my channels, I love the art filters. I love the other controls that we have in Workspace. So if you don't have any other photo processing software like Lightroom or Capture One or Affinity or whatever, uh, PhotoLab Elite will do a lot of the things that those softwares will do, but also allow you to export in a different format like TIFF so you can edit them using Olympus Workspace, uh, like I like to do with the art filters and things. So the question now is, do you get DxO Pure Raw by itself as a separate module, or do you go for the PhotoLab 4 Elite, which includes the DxO Pure Raw? And I think if you already have Lightroom or Affinity or Capture One, you really all you need is the DxO Pure Raw. You can do all the additional processing yourself in these other softwares. However, if you're not using any other software, I think it's worth the extra 60 bucks to get the PhotoLab 4 Elite. Uh, because it has a lot of tools in there that you'll find in these other programs. Now, I'll be doing some more videos in the future on PhotoLab 4 Elite uh, and talk about some of the great you know, features that it has, but also some of the limitations. Uh, so if you'd like to see me do videos like that, maybe talk about the DxO Film Pack, just let me know in the comments below. But either way, I think uh, it's definitely worth at least downloading and giving a shot. And again, I'll have, if you want to support the channel, I have the affiliate links down below that you can download your free trial. And if you're watching this on May 31st, uh, the day this video comes out, uh, 2021, this is the last day to get 30% off. And I'm so sorry for getting this video out so late, uh, but I just got this software myself. Uh, so give that a shot. Download it for yourself. See if you like it. And... Like I said, I think it's money well spent. So that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.